<laughs> shall we study Bible together? And uh, before we do, shall we pray? Father in heaven, preach, teach us your word. Thank you, Jesus, and pray. Amen. All right. Well, uh, as you know, we, we are studying uh, the Revelation. Now, we are almost, almost end of the entire uh, Revelations. Actually, the Revelation, the last book, the Bible, so we are almost, almost studying the, um, the last part of the Bible, uh, last pages of the Bible. Now, uh, today, we're going to study the Revelation, chapter 21, uh, verse 9 to 17. The title I gave is a New Jerusalem. Um, now, let me ask you some question. Have you ever thought that maybe uh, you know, you worried about the uncertainty of your future. Um, you know, sometimes we're concerned about what will happen in our future. Uh, some of you probably wonder that what kind of an income you will get in the future, or what kind of job you will get. Um, you know, or some of you may be thinking about you know wh whom you're going to marry to in the future. Uh, we have a lot of things we worry about the future because there's lots of uncertainty and especially living in this world uh, knowing the future is kind of scary sometimes because uh, things not well it's getting kind of uh, crazy well I have noticed that the temperature in the entire world getting hotter and hotter um, you know I, I, I well right now I live in Japan but in compared to when I was a kid uh, here in Japan, uh, you know, now it's much, much, much harder. Um, I recall when I was like an elementary kid, like a 1970s, um, you know, the temperature here in Japan was the maximum is about 33, maybe 34 centigrade. But now, now it's almost 40 centigrade at the highest point how that possible i mean that's that's a kid and then this is not only ha happening in japan but it seems like everywhere in the world getting hotter and hotter oh that's bad and then that definitely uh concerns us the uncertainty of our future um seems like we have a lot stronger storms and the earthquake and bunch of a natural phenomena uh really concerns about us, uh, uh con make us concerned about the future and um um now bible it's an amazing book because bible i mean <laughs> bible telling telling us about the future <laughs> uh it's called prophecy and uh, as you know, the revelation really telling us, uh, teaching us, uh, to show us that what will end. Um, now, according to the Bible, the, what we have learned uh, from the revelation, that uh, eventually this world that we, we call this world will dissipate, will, will be gone. Uh, the God is going to create new heaven and new earth. <laughs> that's very hard to imagine that you know uh, there will be there uh, see we think the entire universe will exist eternally and then the, the earth will stay stay as earth that's what we think and the many uh, science fiction movie is based on that earth remain for you know millions of years or something like that but then Bible teaching us that there will be a new earth. <laughs> I mean, our current earth seems will be gone, will be disappear, and then there will be a new universe. I, I well, anyway, new new earth and new heaven. I, it, I can even even imagine it will be a, like a totally new dimensions, almost like. But then uh, the Bible also clearly indicates at the uh, the, uh, the before the new earth and new uh, heaven will be created there will be a judgment uh, that every people every human that's really including Christian too will be judged of course in case of Christian will be judged a little bit differently than non-Christian 
But let me read you uh, Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27. And just as it is destined for people to die once, and after this comes judgment. Well, the Hebrew uh, chapter 9, verse 27 is clearly indicate all, all human will be judged. Now, in case of Christian, will be I don't know that judgment is the right word or not for Christian, but will be questions about our conduct or deed because God will gonna ask every Christian the what kind of servant we were. Um, uh, you know, some will be rewarded, and uh, some who God will feel really sad that you didn't do anything. Some people feel really shamed. Um, but then, interesting things about the God's judgment is not judged by human standard. It will be judged by God's righteousness. See, what is right and what is wrong is not determined by men, but is determined by God. Uh, it is wrong to steal from people. Uh, it is wrong to kill people, and um, it is wrong to like a uh, rape a person. It it, it whole, whole things is wrong. It is clearly God gave us uh, the some we call the law through the Moses and called Ten Commandments, uh, uh, especially that really indicate or teaching us what is right and what is what is wrong. Um, but we human a tendency to kind of easy on ourselves, and uh, we think, oh, that's okay, or oh, that's 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 fine. Well, you know, the so many things that we we kind of a uh, we kind of change the standard uh, called God's righteousness, but then we'll be judged based on God's ju ju uh, righteousness. And um, what we have learned so far is uh, only people who can enter into the new earth and new heaven is a person whose names are written in the book, something called Book of Life. Uh, because the time of judgment uh, by God, that there will be many, many books. And uh, each book really uh, telling us probably the detail about what person did in their 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 past uh, all you know wow everything being revealed um, I I wanted to know who killed the Kennedy but anyway what I'm saying is that you know all the everything all the mystery in history will be revealed I would say uh, but in case of a Christian oh wow thank you my lord I'm not going to be asked my sin. You know, my sins are forgiven by bl blood of Jesus. Uh, it's not my merit, but because of Jesus uh, went on the cross for me uh, and then died and shed the blood, uh, just because faith alone uh, make me considered to be a righteous, even though I am not, but then the God forgiven all my sin. and uh, But then he will ask, uh, me the how I lived um, as a Christian but anyway so that's how will be end according to the Bible or about the future will be there's a big judgment waiting for us and at the last uh, 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 last week we learned that uh, the God show the John the new Jerusalem and uh, John so the beautiful new Jerusalem came down from the heaven and the, this this new Jerusalem is called the bride of God a, a bride of lamb uh, well let me move on to study today uh, uh, chapter the chapter uh, uh, 21 verse 9 let me read then one of the seven angels who had the seven balls full of seven last plagues came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Now, so the, uh, here, the one of the seven angels 
who had the seven plagues. Now he 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 probably the uh, I I I call the uh, guiding angel. Uh, his his there's a one angel seems like uh, really helping John to go through this entire book of Revelation, and uh, I think that's the same angel, I guess. But then, uh, well, you know, some scholar maybe say no, but then, uh, but either way, there's an angel, and then that angel will tell John, "I'm going to show you the bride of the Lamb." Um, now, why why it's a why the city the New Jerusalem called bride? Uh, you know, think about the the bride. To us, usually that the that the female, the human human female, is a is a bride and groom. And, but so, but in the Bible, often describe the Jerusalem or the big city called bride. Uh, Bible also call Christians often called bride, even though the half the Christians are men. So, how, what is what is the bride? Now, when we look at the Bible. Really, the consummation of the marriage is means that two become one, and um, I guess that in case of a Jerusalem, the uh, the God will go enter into the Jerusalem, and He gonna stay in there, and that's why, uh, just like you know, the uh, for us Christian, even though the Christian half half the Christians are men, uh, the God's God Spirit, God Himself, enter into us Christian, and so that's really consummation of the marriage. The 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 two become one flesh and uh, be united. So I think the New Jerusalem is really where the gods live inside, and the God is actually in Jerusalem and that's kind of a really a consummation of the marriage that God indicate the Jerusalem uh, as a new Jerusalem as a bride and um, that's the same way God called Christian as a bride because uh, every Christian God is inside of us and uh, uh, but, but you know, so significant things is uh, uh, this angel said I will let you see this bride where the where the God inside of the city uh, will coming down from the heaven. Uh, now this is a very similar to the when uh, you know angel show the Babylon Bidibona. Uh, let me read chapter seventeen verse one. The comparison compare the New Jerusalem and the Babylon is very interesting. Let me read chapter seventeen verse one. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven balls came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. Now, that uh, chapter 17, verse 1, when uh, God introduced Babylon to John, uh, it was the very same way God introduce uh, the city to John. Uh, God used uh, one of the seven angels of the uh, has the seven balls of the judgment and this angel said to John, hey I will show you the prostitute Babylon. Uh, now the same way uh, you know the, the angel, the one the angel who had the seven balls that he, he said to John, I will show you the bride of lamb. So why the prostitute? Why the bride? And also the name Babylon means basically chaos. It is a total mess. That's what the Babylon basically means. Uh, confusions. But case of the Jerusalem, the name Jerusalem means peace. That's a very different concept. And um, uh, so here the John going to see the new Jerusalem, the, the bride of Lamb. And let me continue to read verse 10 and 11. And he carried me away in a spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her brilliance was like a very variable stone like a stone of crystal clear 
jasper. Now that is a very interesting description. What John saw was this entire city coming down from the heaven. Now that is that is that is some kind of scene. Uh, have you ever seen the city coming down from the heaven? That's that's amazing. But but the, what's so amazing is that uh, the Bible described this city is actually shining. See when when uh, Bible says the glory of God in the, in the city because God is in the city and and God is so glorious and um, it's apparently His glory is uh, literally shining. It is a really bright light shining and then the, uh, this entire city it seems like uh, made of the uh, uh, it's a jewel called jasper now jasper is usually not uh, transparent but um, according to the Bible this this jasper transparent I, I the best I can think of is probably looks like a like a diamond have you ever seen the diamond uh, well I, you know, probably you have some experience, a same experience like uh, when, when, well, I have, I, 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 you know, I, I've been married, and so when, when I get married, I had to buy the diamond somehow. Well, maybe I didn't have to, but I, when I had to propose, I bought a diamond, and then diamond, very expensive, man. But then um, I went to the jewelry shop and uh, purchased a little tiny diamond. And then the, the shop owner really explained to me about the diamond. To me, the diamond was almost the price of the car that I can afford. Uh, so, 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 but then I look at the little tiny diamond shine on the light. And then, oh, wow, it looks like a rainbow. It's so, but to me, is I get a uh, little tiny, tiny diamond I purchased and I gave to uh, you know my wife uh, for when I proposed. I had I had never seen that diamond since then. But either way, either way, uh, here's the entire city. Um, probably looks like a diamond. You know how magnificent. Uh, I and mean, what we, we <laughs> that. That's how beautiful it is. I think that's how John described. I think he was probably speechless when he saw. Um, maybe it looks like this if you look at this the beautiful, beautiful, shining city, Jerusalem. Maybe it looks like a, made by diamond and then shine because of the God is in there, the, all the glory, beautiful, brilliant, shining Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Wow, that's amazing. And then uh, another thing that we notice that uh, there seems like a high mountains in the New Jerusalem, uh, New Heaven, and New Earth. We don't know much about New Heaven, and New Earth. It's the totally new dimensions, new space. But seems like an angel took John and high mountains. So there must be a, a mountain. Uh, I we know there there won't be any uh, ocean. Uh, in a new uh, heaven and new earth, but then uh, there must be a, a mountains there. Anyway, so John went up the mountains and saw the uh, Jerusalem coming down, and it must be must be very very pretty. Uh, then let's move on uh, to the uh, verse twelve and fourteen. It had a great and high wall with the twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels. And names were written on the gates, which are the name of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three gates on north, three gates on south, and three gates on west. And the wall of the city had the twelve foundation stones, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Now again, it's a very interesting that uh, well, John saw that there is a wall surrounding this city, uh, the New Jerusalem, and in uh, each side of the wall, the, you see this New Jerusalem. Uh, it looks like a square shape, um, and then the they had a full side, and uh, each side had the three gates, um, and then the Bible said that each gate has a name of the tribe of the Israel and so they're the 12 gates now question is uh, who are the 12 tribes of Israel 
um, you know, some of you say, oh, of course we know the 12 tribes of Israel is written in the Bible. Yes, it is. But then, the New Testament, especially the book of Revelation, uh, the omit the tribe of Dan from the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, instead of Dan, uh, the New Testament include the Manasseh. Now, let me show you the um, uh, next uh, uh, slides here. Uh, now, the, there's the 12 tribes of uh, Israel and each one has a very interesting name uh, but then in case of Dan at the bottom of this list the Dan uh, means judge or judged uh, I don't know does that mean Dan the tribe of Dan being judged and um, but then Manasseh means being forgot or forget <laughs> so Manasseh being forgotten I don't know but then the reason this is interesting is uh, uh, the Old Testament includes the Dan as the twelve tribes, and then the um, but but then but then New Testament is not. So so if I go in there on uh, New Jerusalem, I wanted to know. Now some people say, oh, that twelve gates uh, is probably named after the when the Israeli forms the army when they march. Uh, the time of the Moses. Uh, let me read uh, number chapter 2 verse 2. The sons of Israel shall camp each by his own flags with the banner of their father's household. They shall camp around the tent of meetings at the distance. Now so they, they camp. Now let me show you the next slides. They camp like this and then the, uh, here uh, the dine in there but also Manasseh in there. So um, you probably wonder, can that be a 13 instead? But then uh, remember the Levites uh, are not in the, the, the uh, a circle, uh, Levites in the center. So that's why, uh, so the name of the gate, uh, some scholars think, is uh, based on the, uh, the armies marched, uh, camped uh, in Israel. Uh, now, some people argue and say, oh, no, no, uh, the three gates named after the uh, Ezekiel chapter 40, because Ezekiel, uh, in the chapter 40, the God showed the future Jerusalem, and uh, it's written like this in, uh, I'm sorry, okay, Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 31 and uh, 34, not, not the 40, I'm sorry, uh, Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 31 and 34 say like this shall be the gates of the city named for the tribes of Israel three gates towards north the gates of Reuben one the gates of Judas one and the gate uh, gate of Levi one on the east side uh, 1500 cubes shall be three gates the gate of Joseph one the gate of Benjamin one and the gate of Dan one on the south side, 45,000 cubits by measurement, shall be three gates, the gate of Simeon, one, the gate of Iskar, one, and the gate of Zebulun, one. Uh, on the west side, 4,500 cubits, shall be three gates, the gate of God, one, the gate of Asha, one, and the gate of Naphtali, one. Now, that uh, Ezekiel description does have a 12 tribes but there the Levites in there and also Joseph <laughs> and also Dan was mentioned um, I don't know how so every there are so many scholars have a different uh, viewpoint about who will be on the name of the 12 tribes of the Israel on this new Jerusalem Frankly, do I care about that? No. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm curious. Yes, I am curious. So w when I go up there, I'm going to check. Is, he, is that name down there or what happened to Manasseh? Uh, you know, uh, that's, that's interesting, don't you think? But anyway, also the Bible said this city have a foundation and the foundations is uh, name there are twelve foundations. Now let me show you the next slides. Maybe maybe like a twelve layers. I'm I'm not sure the, how the foundation works in this way, but um, the that twelve foundation is named after the twelve 
uh, 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 disciple of Jesus. Now, 12 disciples of Jesus is also interesting. Who's the 12, 12 disciples? Do you remember that after the Judas Iscariot, that he betrayed Jesus? There will be 11. And the book of Acts uh, indicate that they, they cast a lot, and then they made the, uh, uh, Matthias as a new uh, 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 disciple of Jesus. So it should be Matthias' name on there, but the, this guy, the Matthias, uh, uh, that was the last part he, his name was mentioned in uh, uh, the, the uh, but, but then after that, we really don't know anything about Matthias. Matthias seems really didn't do much uh, as a 12 disciple. But then how about the Paul? Um, you know, Matthias was chosen by men, but then the Paul apparently chosen by God. And then Paul himself said he is an apostle to the Gentile. So, is it apostle, 12 apostle, is including Paul or Matthias? So <laughs> again, just like uh, just like uh, 12 tribes of Israel, whose name on that 12 foundation of the newsroom. So soon as I go there, I, I want to check both. Oh, oh, Matthias is not there, or the, or the Paul is, I don't know, I don't know. But one thing's for sure is that New Jerusalem, that the 12 tribes of Israel, Israel and the Christians, they're both in there because they're both important. Uh, 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 and then uh, all I can say is Israel plays a, a great role in the New Jerusalem. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm myself called so-called dispensationist. I know some people uh, especially here in Japan, uh, the, when I say the dispensationist, uh, some people, I don't know why, but here in Japan, uh, uh, people think that, uh, you know, dispensation is uh, kind of strange or something like that. But in the in U.S., uh, dispensation is uh, one of the major, probably the one of the mainstream, I think it is. And then the, uh, from dispensation viewpoint, the Israel is a very important. Israel, God gave the promise to Israel, and he will never, ever uh, uh, broken his promise to Israel. So Israel is throughout the history, uh, very important. So, to to me, the name the twelve tribe the Israel in the New Jerusalem and the uh, gate, uh, it is a sure proof that dispensation is correct. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's my that's my. Opinion. But either way, beyond the point, uh, all I can say is uh, both New Testament uh, uh, and Old Testament uh, really uh, con combine the Jew and the Gentiles and be there and um, uh, interesting. Um, okay, let's move on to the next uh, verse, uh, 15 to 16. The one who spoke with me had a gold measuring rod to the measure of the city, its gates, and its wall. The city is laid out as a square, and its length is as great as the width. And he measured the city with a rod, 12,000 st stadia, its length width and height are equal. Wow! Now, uh, Angel uh, gave John the actual size of the city. And uh, what so surprised us is uh, how big the city is. It's a 12,000 stadiums. Uh, that's really converted to about 15 thousand miles, 15,000 miles, about 220, 220, uh, 2, 220 kilometers. That's only one side. And then shape of the sea is, is square, but the, the length and the width, and also even height is the same. Now, that that's a so there's only two possibilities the shape of the uh, city is either like a dice looking you know square dice looking or looks like a pyramid i i don't know but either way uh let me show you the next slides because of the size that's if if we put the new jerusalem on current earth even though probably our earth is gone by then but then uh, it will be looks like this in this slides 
it is unproportional. It is just gigantic. The the 1500 miles. I I actually use a Google map and measure how far that is. See, I used to live in Chicago. From so from Chicago, uh, you know, 2200 200 some kilometer is almost to the like a Vegas or Phoenix, Arizona. That's a one side. If it is from New York, it is from New York to all the way to like a Houston, Texas. <laughs> That's just one side of the city. <laughs> and then it's a square. And the heights is the same. Either way, this city is so unbelievably gigantic, uh, beyond, way beyond our imaginations that and then uh you know the shape again uh let me show you next slide some scholar believe is the shape looks like a dice um maybe it is uh you know and then uh, uh then some people think it's like a pyramid uh, possible either one's possible uh now what i think um Frankly, I don't know, but then I'm guessing this New Jerusalem looks like a uh, uh, next slide, uh, uh, like a castle. Looks a little bit like a pyramid, but it's not quite pyramid. It's like a ca the, well, the reason I, what I think it looks like a castle uh, because uh, there's a wall there and wall with the uh, you know three gates in each side, and then if it is a castle. And uh, you know, God inside as a king makes sense to me. I, I mean, I'm you know, romant romanticized whole things, but I'm not sure. Uh, and then maybe, maybe it looks like this. Uh, you know, uh, it's a crystal clear, beautiful, shining, bright, jewel color, uh, rainbow color city. Uh, all I can say is this city is humongous. And um, this city is so beautiful, uh, and also shining, like sh shining, beautiful. And then let me move on to uh, verse 17. And he measured a wall, 144 cubes, by human measurement, which are also angelic measurement. Uh, now, 144 cubes, that is about 60, 63 meter. That's pretty long um the one cubit is about like um, uh you know i think it's uh, like a one foot or something like that a little bit bigger than one uh, okay uh much bigger than one foot but uh like a 44 centimeter or something like that so um 144 is about like uh, uh the length length of the i think the football hit field or something like this so it is it is it is it is pretty big wall um, and then the, this wall surrounding, but it, but in the in one side is a uh, two thousand two hundred kilometers. So it it is just a just unthinkable how big. Now, uh, if I compare this great city called New Jerusalem, if I compare with a city called Babylon, do you remember the Babylon? According to Bible, it's a big humongous city on this earth but but then one thing is notice the babylon is not the god made city it is a mom made city babylon is really what the, when the men get together and uh, really the men saying that oh let's get us let's build a big city for ourselves and then uh, uh, so that god will not scatter us and um, then the Babylon is a symbol. The Babylon is a tall tower, and um, so I think it's God is telling us, as we live in uh, this history of the mankind, um, and then close to the end of our history, I think that we human is going to make the city like the ancient Babylon. Uh, the Babylon is really is a made by men. And then compared to the Babylon made by men, this city, the New Jerusalem, is huge. Um, you know, the 
the big city we call, for example, New York, is uh, the compared to New York City. New York is a big city, as you know. Um, compared to New York, the New Jerusalem is six thousand times bigger. The one side is from New York all the way to uh, Dallas, Texas, or Houston. So that's just one side inside the square. Uh, with, with the compare, the, you know, it was compared to the city of Los Angeles. The city of Los Angeles is pretty big too. It's a pretty huge area. Uh, but then this New Jerusalem is about 4,000 times bigger than the city of Los Angeles. It's it, it just, just huge. Um, you know, we, we, we think, so compared to the, what the human built city, this God built city is uncomparable. It is just, just beyond the, what human can do. And then uh, um, Babylon will be judged and destroyed by God, but then God is going to create his city. It's, uh, you know, not, not twice or not 10 times. I'm talking about like a 6,000 times uh, bigger than what the human uh, city is called the big city. I mean, we, we, we think we're so proud of the big, big city that we built and we built a tall tower. But when God built the city, uh, that's that just beyond our comprehension and heights is beyond our comprehension something what we can do that's what the magnificent this city is and the, it's amazing now um, if we compare to this new city the current world uh, or this earth the new heaven and new earth is the totally seems like totally different place and um, uh, you know as we live in this world yeah we concerned see we live in a time that the the Babylon the city Babylon exists where I think I think now we live in towards the end of the uh, history that's what I think I think Jesus return uh, will be soon that's how I feel but Either way, all I can say is we still live in uh, this satanic world and um, uh, Babylon's everywhere to me. Uh, I think the city of Babylon is a uh, Babylon is a mother and there's a bunch of daughters every, everywhere in the world. So all the big city in the world looks like a Babylon because every big city wanted to be like Babylon, the mother city and um, everyone built the tall towers and uh, they 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 so proud of the humans achievement they forgot about God nobody really talk about God actually some people even think it is so ridiculous uh, believing God and but then but in the same time this Babylon is so chaotic so mess some confusion you you really don't know about the future uh, uncertainty of the future we some of us is really concerned about where should we live, what kind of job we get. Uh, some people really worry losing job because they're so uncertain about future. You you could be you could be fired tomorrow uh, or even today. Um, some of you really worry about if you can pay the uh, next month's bill uh, because so uncertain. Many great crazy things happens um, if you got sick. Uh, you know, many of us worry about uh, are we able to pay for the hospital expense and stuff. Uh, uh, there's so much uncertainties in this world and we concern and worry and such a pressure. Um, you know, but see, the Bible seems like the time you are so uncertain. God seems to put us into the high mountain and let us see the future. Uh, in case of Ezekiel, let me read Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 2. Uh, Ezekiel saw this. Um, in the vision of God, he brought me into the land of Israel and set me on a very high mountain. And on it to the south, there was something like a structure of the city. The time, the time of uncertainty. Uh, in case of Ezekiel, God took Ezekiel in the high mountains nearby Jerusalem and let him see the future Jerusalem. 
and uh, in, uh, for example like a Moses the time the Moses was so uncertain that he got told him that he cannot enter the promised land and the time of his death that God took Moses to the high mountain and let him see the future visions of the kingdom of Israel from the uh, north to north to south to east to west in the, 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 the gigantic area of the kingdom of Israel to Moses to let him see the future same way I think in a time of uncertainty that we live maybe some will be suffering or worry concerned about what will happen uh, tomorrow whether you can pay the bills or you maybe lose your job or losing health or can you pay the you know uh, your payment for mortgage you maybe lose the house or maybe somebody will take your car away because uh, the maybe a bank you cannot pay pay the uh, mortgage that you made um, all the uncertainty and the frustration and there's no love in this world in the this is a really Babylon like city but then the God would took us in high mountains and just like he did through, uh, with a John he showed us the future and our future is that New Jerusalem and the shining beautiful New Jerusalem gigantic compared to what the human can do and nothing compared with our current world you see uh, this current world really boss you know boss us around and uh, you know really gives a pressure and uh, really um, there's no really hope in the future and it seems like the world going wrong way um, the temperature of the world become hotter and hotter um, we don't know and then um, every leader of the world talking about oh we have to do something about the you know co2 issue the carbon uh, monoxide issue but it seems not going anywhere and then I don't know it is crazy world um, but then the God show us the future and that is that new Jerusalem and then um, why we worry so much about uh, uh, things uh, do you remember God told us that don't worry about what we eat and what we wear um, you actually better than the bird flying in the sky but concentrate and uh, you know the uh, the kingdom of God and his righteousness let me read the Luke chapter 12 verse 25 and 26 and which of you by worry can add a day to his lifespan therefore if you cannot do even a very little things why do you worry about other things see um, the New Jerusalem that's where we will be so we shouldn't really worry too much uh, Luke chapter 12 verse 31 said it is but seek his kingdom and these things will be provided to you the God is absolutely clear about uh, promising us that we shouldn't worry about what's going on now but concentrate the God's kingdom which is we enter the New Jerusalem and um, when I think about all these things, even this world, this earth, and this entire universe will be disappear. It will be gone. So why, why I have to worry about so much about now? The concentrate is His kingdom and His righteousness, and that's what we need as a Christian. Shall we pray? Oh, thank you, Lord, for today's teaching. We really concerned and worry about how we live in this world, but you show us a future, and that is a brilliant, beautiful New Jerusalem, and that's where we'll be eternally. Lord, thank you that you let us see the future. Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you take care. Have a nice day. Bye bye.